All right, I'm live. I'm just also getting situated. So good morning, good morning. I am Tony from the Fibrology Lab, and this is the Coffee Chat with me. Um, I am coming in um, I'm right on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 10 a.m. today. Yesterday, I missed it for some reason. Um, I was busy doing other things in my office space, so I apologize for not being here as I should be. But we'll, we will try to keep that momentum going as we go through the rest of this month. The month um, we're talking about um, quilting basics. And uh, today we're going to talk about marking the top of our quilt. So we've got all our blocks done. We've got our rows done. We've added our borders. Now we're going to talk about how to mark our quilt because we want to quilt it. Now, um, we'll talk more about that in a minute. So I'm gonna I was about to dive in. But we're not going to dive in quite yet. I want to wait till everyone comes in and says good morning. If you're in, the, if you're on live, please say hi. That way I can acknowledge you. And if you are watching the replay, replay, please say hi as well because I do appreciate your time. Hey there, Christine. Good morning to you. Hello, Miss Hope. Good morning to you as well. Um, and I want to start off with something funny. Um, so I'm set. Um, my camera's actually set up a little differently. I got this brand new shirt yesterday from Miss Linda, and I have to show it off because it's awesome and it's funny. So I had to stand my tippy toes though, so the camera can see it. And it says, "Squirrels are awesome, awesome. Therefore, I am a squirrel." There you go. In a nutshell, I am a squirrel. I just thought it was awesome. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Linda, for the shirt. I really appreciate it. Good morning, Miss Anna. Good to see you this morning. Uh, and the other thing I did, I haven't done probably since high school. I never cut my hair. I am so desperate for a haircut. I haven't found the right hair dresser here yet that I'm happy with. The last one really kind of disappointed me. So I haven't found somebody yet. And I really need to get my hair done. And uh, so I took my bangs and I cut them. So I can see now. That, to me, that's more important than what it looks like. So hopefully I don't look too scary. Because I have no, you know, they're not hopefully you can't tell they're not even that they're really not even so anyway, that was something i did fun today how many of you have ever tried to cut your own hair there's a reason i have not done it but uh, yeah i had to i couldn't see it there i was like darn it i need the hair out of my eyes so that's what i did i cut my i'm gonna cut my hair um i have a niece who's a hairdresser i can send to florida oh christine that'd be awesome um, I don't know if I want to pay for her travel to come to Florida, but uh, maybe I need to come up there and say, hey, make me an appointment. Um, I'll think about that. I, I, it's hard to find a hairdresser. You know, I, you know, I found a couple in um, when I was in Oak Ridge and I used them for longer periods of time so I could see how they worked with my hair. But down here, it's like, uh, and, you know, people say, oh, do this, use this person, use this person. I'm like, OK. And I just haven't. I just haven't. Never. See, Hope, I think that's what I, that's kind of why I never do it either. Yeah. I think there's some back history. My mom always had the rights to cut my hair. So, anyway. So, I took a chance. I've been watching this guy on Instagram called Hair Buddha. He's hilarious. What he does is just sit and watch other hair disaster uh, videos and he comments them and and he la it's it's pretty funny but anyway he he talks about how you can twist your bangs and cut them um so they kind of lay at like this so they lay, lay like a moon once you cut them i guess that's the right word like a crescent moon and uh he he does pitch he does videos next to other people that do it and they twist it so tight and they'll cut it like right up here on top of their forehead and he's like oh no it's too short you should have done that and so I tried it. He goes, you totally can do it. Just cut down here by your nose, not up on your forehead. I'm like, oh, that's smart. So anyway, I did it. <laughs> Willing to bring our hardship coming to beach. <laughs> well, there you go, Christine. Um, maybe we'll have to talk. We'll have to talk to see if she'll come down and do my hair. So that's that. So I've had some fun things. My hair today and my cool new shirt that justifies me being a squirrel. I love it. I think we need to make shirts. I think that's my next shirt. I'm, wor I'm working with somebody um, well, uh, locally that we're trying to get together and get some shirts made up um, that are just for our shop. So I think we have found a good source this time to work for forward into 2023, which I'm in deep planning mode, trying to get everything ready for 2023, including a new CEO club layout um, and a couple more retreats throughout the year. Of course, our virtual retreats always, but we're doing some personal in-person retreats um, that um, we're just going to have fun and just 
and get everybody together to play. And then I've got some classes, and then I've got, but, 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 I've got lots of fun stuff. So I just want to get everything. I'm a planner. I like to plan and have things structured down, and then we, then when it's that month, I'm like, yay, let's do this. It's already planned. It makes life so much easier. It really does. It really does. So today we're going to talk about, in section 15, we are talking about marking tools. I have, I very, I will put the PDF, I scheduled it, I got smart now, the PDFs are scheduled, so they'll go up 15 minutes after the live. Um, and we're going to talk about marking our top of our quilt. So when you look at my quilt, and it's kind of hard with the lighting in here, but you can see it's it's got hatchworks. It's done in X's. So super simple to mark. But what tool do we use? There are so many different styles of marking tools, and that's the really focus I'm going to talk about today. Because I, cut, I realized after I talked about our half square triangles, and we marked that diagonal on our square, what tool we should use and what tools might not be appropriate that I probably should address this then, but we're going to do it now. So it's all good. I might flip it around in the sessions when I actually remember this is a free, I'm just offering free advice right now. And again, it's my, it's my interpretation of my processes. Doesn't mean it's the end all be all way to do it. Find what works best for you. Try every, <laughs> did you hear that? I was a child screaming. Uh, try every, um, every way to get a, to try all different, ways and then find one that fits you so this fits me um and in my mindset and my logic and if, if i resonate with you great if not i'm not offended i'm okay with that but I'm, I'm in the process of giving this information free and then i am recreating all these videos um and making a actual learn to quilt class that i'll offer in january so um uh people can kind of be all together as we understand when I start talking about stuff. Um, you know, do you have your accurate processes done? And you'd be like, I don't know what that means. Hey, I have a learn to quilt show. So that's the goal. That's the long goal. And then in January, we're going to talk about um, a couple new techniques. So I'm going to build techniques on our coffee chats um, for um, future, future classes. So, okay, so I'm going to change over my camera. We're going to go to my dip workstation and look at... Oh, how messy it is. Look how messy my workstation is. It really isn't. These are piles of, uh, uh, of uh, marking tools. Marking tools. Now, the one I didn't pull out, I should have pulled out the traditional silver pencil that 99% of quilters own because they were told they need a marking pencil. I didn't pull that out. So I'm going to talk about all these and why they're different and how to use them. In our PDF today, I talk about... let's. Let's assess for doing. So if we were doing a half square triangle, we need a very fine line because we are marking stitch lines for those those diagonals. And we need it something that it's okay because it's on the wrong side of the fabric. So you, you don't necessarily want to use chalk pencils because they leave a fat dust. So the first step in choosing the right marking tool is what kind of marking am I doing? So that's a question you're going to ask yourself. The, and in, in kind of like a sub um, thought process, is it going to be a large area or a small area? Is it going to be the right side or the wrong side of the fabric? Can the line be hidden by either an, an, a future applique process on top of it or an embroidery process on top of it? So that's the first question you want to kind of assess. And then the ease of removing these marks. So some of these are easier to markings are easier to remove than others. Something to think about. And if I'm using a marking, uh, if I'm using a ruler or uh, that I need to run a pin line across or down it, again, what tool is going to work best for that? What marking tool is going to work best for that? And those questions are going to be in your PDF, so you can kind of um, you come back to those and remember those. So for marking our um, Quilt, I'm actually going to recommend a, uh, a water-soluble felt tip marker. But let's talk about the pile of different markers I have so you can be assessing what you have in your own stash. So up here in the, in the far left corner, top left corner, we have what are called air erasable, air erasing markers, which means, especially if you have a very humid home, you put that on the fabric, it's going to disappear because of the moisture in your air. Um, 
these I do not recommend for marking your quilts with because if you sit there and take an, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes to mark your entire quilts, guess what? By then the lines from the very first part are going to be gone. So do not use these for um, marking your quilt tops. But say if you know, um, and if you know also if your home is a little more moist, it doesn't have a dehumidifier, or you you live in Florida and you don't have the AC down to 70 degrees where you know it's dry, uh, you don't want to necessarily ever use these. I have these mainly because, again, I tried them. And I like them. I like sew line products the best, to be honest with you, just because it's a fine line and because Tula Pink recommended it. But because it's an air race, I rarely use it. Rarely use it. So that's what those ones are there. And then this is a Clover brand. So those are the air race ones. Now we have our famous friction. These have these are, you know, back in the high school days, my high school days, they were just coming out with erasable pens. These are like the modern version of erasable pens. So they were on the market for school products. And then someone said, hey, these would be great for quilting. And I'm going to say maybe. I'm going to say maybe. I'm, I like fr friction pens for my um, calendars. So if I need to remove something, they're great and they're colorful. I don't necessarily enjoy them for quilting processes. I, I, I should have done a sample. I have um, made bags with them before, and I have seen the lines come back. So the, the thing with a friction pen is when you rub it, it creates friction, and that's heat, and it removes the color of the pen. There's actually two different inks in a friction pen. One is a gel base, and one is the pigment base. The pigment base is what actually is erased and gone when you rub it and put iron or heat to it. The gel base part stays behind so if you are working with a project say like a wall hanging or table right where you just don't think you'll ever wash it then you could use this on the wrong side of the fabric and feel comfortable with it now when you do wash it, the friction pen the most of the time i would say most of the time the the gel ink will be washed out um, but if for some bizarre reason um if you especially like a bag i did it on a bag i used it for about marking um grommets remember the grommet bags oh my gosh they were so big about 10 years ago and I made several of them for gifts and um, I used a friction pen on the outside of one she took it outside it was like 35 degrees and that white line showed right across the, the pink fabric that uh, I had marked it on so just something again what's your purpose that you're using the marking pen for this works great in a half square triangles um, it's a really fine tip I've also noticed uh, with some of the times with the frictions is they skip again that just my noticing I don't try to use them very often I tend to use all the ones you see on the bottom so those are my uh, those are the friction pens um, have I missed any questions okay then now the next things I have um, are our traditional chalk pencil uh, rolling um, I guess they're not pencils but rolling stylus so they have these tiny little wheels this is very like a dressmaker tool and when we started quilting, they say, oh, you need chalk pencils. This is what you need to use. You need to use these. And they also the silver pencil that used to have, they have out there. Um, I rarely use these now unless I'm in a pinch and I can't find anything else. And you notice I have two different colors, too. One to see on dark fabrics and one to see on light fabrics. So I can see on both, um, on both styles. And I actually do have the purple and the gray and the blue. I have all of them. Like I said, this is just some of my marking tools but this is um when we talk we think about marking our quilt in the day um there's still actually i think you still can order it i i don't carry it because i don't necessarily a lot of people don't purchase um uh, stencils using stencils to mark and they use this product called chalk uh pounce and when you pounce it on it's called pounce because you bounce it on the the stencil and it leaves a, a the outline of your stencil on your uh, quilt the thing i found out with this type of stuff it's better for hand work. So if you have your quilt up on your frame and you're hand stitching, it's not going to be going. So it's not going to rub or dissipate too much. But if you are doing machine quilting, one, this stuff will build up in your machine. It will build up in your needle, in your bobbin case area, the chalk itself. And, uh, and, it go, and it dissipates and smears and goes crazy sometimes. So I don't recommend it for um, machine quilting. So if we are, we are machine quilting, the goal of this whole class and series 
is to have you be successful. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to encourage you to try something to make yourself successful. And then you can test all these other tools if you want to. So these are some other, these are some other marking tools. This is a trio. Um, uh, this I actually have several trios because they have these have different um, things in them. Like the, they're a pencil lead. The lead is washable. That's one thing I should say. This this is water so uh, the lead in here is water soluble. The chalk is not. You have to wash it. Friction and you have to wash it. Air it's it goes away in the air. So these are water soluble um, leads. They have pink on this one. I have white and I think there's gray. Yep, all three of them in there. I like these. Not for marking a quilt because they're such a fine uh, uh, lead. They tend to break as you're pu pulling across that fabric. And so I don't use this for marking. You can. Totally can. If you have a less heavy hand than I do, uh, then you can totally use it. Uh, but like I said, I break the threat. I break the leads a lot. The leads a lot. So this is another one I have used for marking. I tried the other day to order this because I really love this one. It's an inexpensive one. And it has six different, I don't know if you guys can see, oops, see there's six different colors built into this particular marker, marking pencil. It is water soluble and it's a thicker um, lead. So you can take a, uh, a pencil sharpener and sharpen it if you need to and mark with it. And it just slides up and down. And you can, if you can look at it, you can see I've used some of them more than others. I love this one. I, I have several of these ones as well. Um, so I do tend to use this one a lot. And right now, I cannot get it. I went directly to the manufacturer, and it's not available. So the moment it comes available, I'll carry this back in the shop. I, I, I do tend to carry the Trio Pen and the Water Soluble and the Duo, which I want to talk about. This is the... This is the style of pen I would encourage you to use for marking our quilt top today. It is a water soluble pen. It's blue. It comes in different colors. And again, I get colors. I get two of different colors. So if I have dark fabric or light fabric, and I do know that Clover makes a white um, marker as well. I have not been successful with it, but I know they make it. And the other, this is like my all-time favorite right now. Um, I use this more often than any of these other tools. This is called the Sew Line Duo. And what it is, is this is your marking pen, which is a very dark charcoal color when you mark it. And then this one, you can go back and erase that line if you, if you see it. So since we are actually sewing on our line for this, it, th it most likely it will not be seen until, and then you wash it and it comes right out. So again, it is water soluble as well, but there's an extra um, ingredient in the eraser that kind of breaks that ink down even more. So plethora of choices out there. So again, go back to what you are, what is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? And then assess which tool will work best for you. So let's see who have I um, missed any comments. Hey there, Denise. Good morning. No, oh, Christine's totally old school. Christine, which is interesting being that you are a long arm quilter that you use chalk. And that's, and there's nothing wrong with it. Again, this is just how I um, process and how I um, uh, use tools. So you need to learn to figure out what's best for you. So what I'm going to do is I just pulled out my one of my squares that I have worked on my um, because I didn't want a whole top up here. I want, I want it to not be confusing. And using the handout, you can see on the handout, there's little dash lines across the quilt top. And so what you're going to do, I put a pin always in the top corner of my row, so I'm going to take that off. We are going to basically mark X's on every single block. When you do that, when it will create the X into the next block as well. If your blocks are on point and, and matching up in the corners, you can technically take a long ruler and go across your entire top. What I have discovered in teaching this, um, people tend to get lost and confused when they get down to the nine patches. So that's when I said, st I said step back. I just want you to do X's on every, every block. And when you come to an intersection, you can connect your lines. So... When you mark your quilt, you want something firm under them. Don't do this on the ironing board or your bed. I would do it on a coffee, on your coffee table or on a kitchen room table. And I like to put my mat under it because my mat is more, well, it's got a non-stick surface, the 
this particular mat. And so things are going to slide around. If you put it on the table in your dining room, it's going to slide around. So you want a firm surface that helps your um, top stay in place. And like I said, I am going to use a blue uh, water soluble marker, fine tip. And I'm just going to line up corner to corner. But in this, and that is why I show this block. Now, if you were doing your rail fence, it would be no problem. Just corner to corner and draw that line. But with this type of block, we've got three actually different sections in it. So I'm going to go from this point to this point first. Again, I'm teaching beginners. We are all beginners today. And instead of just going all the way across in case, mine do match, but in case they didn't match, we want to kind of fudge them to match. So again, I'm going to go diagonal to diagonal on my center square. Make sure, you, you know, typically what I tell you to cut, have that one inch safety area. Don't give that safety area here because that pressure will leave a space there where the fabric will move. So you actually want your fingers pretty close to your edge of your ruler to do this. And then I'm going to move the ruler a little bit and do the next section. And so it appears, well, like I said, mine are all kind of lined up, but if you have yours or it might not match, it's going to have the illusion of looking straight. And when we sew them, I'm going to talk about this in quilting, we're going to actually stop and pivot and come down. We're going to pivot a little bit so that stitch will jump over that gap. But that's another class. So what you're going to do is you're going to do X on both sides. Let me do, that was my left-handed. Let me do the right-handed version. Um, and do one square at a time. I am not good at writing left-handed. I am right-handed. I'm much better. And you see how it moved? And why did it move? Because my fingers weren't up here putting pressure on that. Make sure you put pressure on your ruler all the way to the end of your fabric. Because it stretches and pulls. We don't want it to pull when we do this process. I'm going to go to the center square and mark it. Again, putting that pressure in the center. I am not right-handed coordinated. So I just totally messed that up. There we go. Then I'm going to come down and do my bottom square. And there you go. You have your X's across your fabric. So, and you, I don't know if you guys noticed, it did stretch and pull. But the more secure you have your ruler push down on top of it, your fabric's not going to pull. So keep that in mind as you're doing it. Don't just graze across and find that you're stretching your fabric and your lines are going to be off. These will be our stitch lines when we get into quilting, which we won't talk about probably for a couple sessions. Next session, I really want to dive into batting because that was requested. So we're going to talk about that. Do we have any other questions? Um, Christine says originally learned from freehand and now I'm just sitting in, I'm set in my own ways. I gotcha. I understand Christine. There's nothing wrong with doing what works best for you and not changing. That's totally understandable. So let me switch back to my main camera and see anybody else have any other questions. Oops, I did the wrong thing. Oop. <laughs> so many buttons. Not enough time. So um, that's just a, uh, you know, a high level of view again about different marking tools and how I want you to mark your, your top. So you're going to go and to mark your top. You're going to do your X's across all your blocks. And then um, today's just Thursday. So Tuesday, we're going to talk about batting. Um, I brought out my batting bolt. I'm going to talk about batting, the batting we carry and how it differs from other battings and uh, uh, some other... Um, other baddings I don't care that I would recommend just as easily. I can't carry everything. I, one, I don't have enough space. And two, it just, it, it, I don't want to confuse it. So this is what we carry. And I'm going to talk about where else you can get other different styles of batting, kinds of batting to work with different things. So, and then we're going to talk about basting. Basting and batting will be our next session because you're going to be basting, which will be fun. It'll be fun. Well, good. I'm glad you love batting, Christine. I, I, I like, um, I'm not, I, I'll get squirrely, squirrel. Remember, I am a squirrel. Awesome, the squirrels are awesome. Therefore, I am a squirrel. That's going to be my new motto, I think. My new motto is, I am a squirrel. So um, that is marking tools for today and mark your quilt top. Um, you have the weekend to do it. And then we'll come back on Tuesday and I'll talk about batting and basting. And then we'll actually start quilting on um, Wednesday and Thursday in different ways. Now, don't expect to have it all done, uh, but... 
well, again, I'm just teaching. I'm just teaching. You're doing this all self-paced. Don't forget to join our Mighty Networks, and that way you can get into our um, group, our Coffee Basics, to see all the PDFs I am showing you with um, with um, information about doing this whole project. So, does anybody have any other questions? Any other questions? I don't see anything this morning, which is fine. It's all good. Um, if you have them, you can always email me at info at fibrologylab.com. And I think that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. Go check out the group. The handout is already up and posted in there. And um, I will be back tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Tuesday, with coffee, coffee chat. Um, tonight, I am going live. We are part of Quilt Must. I just say a quilt must. It's my turn. It's our turn tonight. So we will be live at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7, 7 p.m. Central. And uh, I'm going to talk about some new kits and some new other things. Uh, uh, things, like I said, slowly coming in, slowly coming in. They're coming slowly, but we're getting there. So, um, yeah, I think that's it for our coffee chat. You guys have a great Thursday. Hopefully see you tonight. If not, um, I will see you next chat um, on Tuesday on at 10 a.m. Eastern. You guys have a great one. Remember, we are friends, fibers, and fun. <laughs>